G'day everybody and welcome to um, the first edition of All Wrapped Up, uh, the NRL Wrap of Round 1, 2018. Just want to start with the with the first game, obviously, on, on Thursday night between the Broncos and the Dragons. Um, the inclusion of Benny Hunt and James Graham uh, definitely made a difference to the Red V. Uh, they go forward through the middle, through the middle third, and um, in attacking options, the opposition's half were really, really good. Um, Ben Hunt's game, although it wasn't perfect, he uh, he provided uh, that little bit of stability, and, and and I think the person that benefited the most was Gareth. With obviously, it's um, just his game overall on Thursday night was outstanding. Uh, his kicking game, just his composure, um, his short and his long passing game was great. Um, I think they're going to be pretty good this year, the Dragons. Um, I guess it's going to take time. Um, for a, a lot of their combinations to, to start taking effect, which is the same for all new recruits at all the clubs. But um, I, I think they'll go all right for Dragons. I didn't think it was a great game. A um, bit sloppy, uh, a lot of drop ball, obviously uh, you know, hot hot conditions, slippery ball uh, early in the season. So combinations are still coming together. But I think um, yeah, I think the Dragons were, were good. I, 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 personally, I, I think the Broncos tried. Um, Something in Sam Thida, which they've come out in the last couple of days and, and, and said that it didn't work, to the credit. Um, but I think the Broncos might struggle this year. Uh, be the first to take my hat off if, if they turn it around and, and do really well. But uh, I can't see them. Um, I can't see them damaging the top eight. Um, and anyway, Friday Friday night's game. What a cracker! Um, the Knights and the Sea Eagles up there at McDonald Jones Stadium. Um, the difference between the Knights of the past and the Knights that played on, on, on Friday evening was the fact that they were so composed and the way uh, young Mitchell Pearce got them. Before tap restarts and, and set plays, he, uh, he, he just calmed them down. He did it really, really well. Um, had, had a good long discussion with them before they realised what they were doing. And then they go on, did their business. But he, he's his composure to lead this team around the park, and, and obviously that you know that they respond to him. And um, his short and his long kicking game was was pretty good. You know, for for Mitch's, you know, Mitch has got one of the best kicking games in, in the NRL, and uh, I, I thought his game was was exceptional. Um, Kalen Ponga, although it's only round one, and we, we've had big reps on his kid. For a while, he only I think it was only his tenth game. Um, gee, he's quick across the ground, and um, you know whether he's, he's sweeping around or, or you know he's playing short off off either hip. Um, he's going to be hard to defend against because uh, he moves so quick, so fast, and um, the advantage of, of of having him there is he can get into space re really, really, really quickly. Um, but the other thing is, is if the, if they jam him and they offer space on the outside, you know, M Mitchell Pearce is, is smart enough as a ball player to, to hit space out wide. So, um, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of teams this year that um, are going to struggle to, to defend against Caitlin Ponga. The game, all, all really tight. I'm, I'm not overly sold on, on, on both teams yet. Um, I think the Sea Eagles... Um, Although they played well in patches and they go f forward through the middle, especially off Martin to Powell, um, was outstanding. When when they were, when they were pushing through the middle third and they they plays on the ball, um, you know they were, they were making inroads really really quickly into into the Castle's defence, and um, they had time and space. And but obviously round one execution let them down in in, in a few areas, but. Uh, it's hard to, to judge both teams at this stage and um, until maybe two or three rounds when they start playing off the back of what the Knights have done in the last couple of years. And I know they had a good win on, on, on Friday. Um, I think we need to weigh up you know, when they play against I guess, tougher opposition. Other Friday night game, uh, JT's 300 up there at 1300 smiles. Um, outstanding. He's a... Uh, you know, he hadn't played since I think the 21st of June last year, and um, come back from a shoulder reconstruction, and lead the team around the park. And it wasn't one of his greatest games, but gee, he's good. He'll go down as one of the greatest players to ever play the game. 
without a doubt. Um, and I know there's there's some experts out there that say that, and, and obviously his peers, but he, he's a freak. Um, the Sharks um, defended well, and they were really good in patches. Uh, I guess I have to jump on the bandwagon here and, um, and, and admit that I don't think Valentine Holmes is, is a fullback. Uh, he's an exceptional winger, and he, and he, and he finishes really well. Uh, but in those rep-type games, um, you have to remember that he's on the back of back lines that are, you know, that are representative back lines and, and, and international back lines, and his finishing ability there is great. Um, he's good across the ground. He eats metres well coming out of his own half. Um, but one of the greatest things about his game in the last couple of years is Cronulla's back five, uh, getting him out of trouble. Him being one of them was was you know paramount. And they were they were awesome. Uh, I just don't think he he's a fullback. That's just my opinion, and I'm sure there's other people out there that will disagree. But uh, including Val himself, but um, I think they'd be better served if if they um, if they put uh, maybe Matty Moyle in there and got Matty off an edge. Uh, he was targeted. He was targeted big time on uh, on Friday night. Uh, and um, made a couple of bad decisions in defence, but he, I, th I thought he, you know, he put his body on the line. It's not as if he didn't have a go. Just that uh, you know, when you've got big bodies coming at you close to the line, it, it's, it's hard to defend against. He's a, he's a talent, and um, I think they'd be better served if they, if they had him at the back. Um, and just with his ball playing ability and his vision too, when he chimes in either through middle third and, and opposition half, you know, he's got that ball, that vision, that better vision in my opinion. Saturday's game, um, my team, the Roosters, got done by got done by the Tykes. Um, in saying that, they they um, they look like they, they're obviously playing a different structure to what they have in the past. And um, a lot of a lot of their play in previous years has been um, just their short passing game on the advantage line. Um, and on the weekend at it kind of looked like they were, they were obviously trying to get to edges a little bit quicker um, to get uh, good clean ball to Latrell Mitchell and, and Joseph Marner, um, which is understandable. You know, two big, powerful young kids, and, and you know they, they bust the line. They're really hard to handle. Uh, I think it's going to take them a little bit of time to get used to playing with one another. And I know this was said prior to... Um, to round one and there was a lot of experts out there that actually that said that and watching the game you can see that you know they they, they really struggle um, on execution on on last play um, I'm not writing them off I, I think they're going to be outstanding when they click God help any team in the in the NRL because they're going to be outstanding um, with the Tigers <laughs> what a turnaround Ivan Cleary's obviously had Everything that he needed to have as a as a head coach, you know, he he's changed his staff. Um, he's obviously got a roster in now that he's he's, he's happy with. Um, the the style of football that they played on the weekend was really steely, especially against a team that's also not only a great attacking team, but they're also a very good defensive team in the Roosters. They held they held them and for long periods of the of the game in in. in Pressure situations, um, which is a credit, you know, to, to the Tigers. Uh, in the past, you, I'd, you'd probably say that they they will, um, but they held their resolve on the weekend and and they did a great job. Um, I think there's big things for the Tigers this year. Oh, I think they can push maybe bottom eight, seven or eight, um, but it all depends between now and round ten how consistent they can be and then take that level of consistency into into the back end of the season. The other game, oh, the other two games that came out of the West over here where I am in Perth, um, to say that I was blown away by the Warriors, I was, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, they look fitter, um, they, they look leaner, and um, coming from a former strength and conditioning background myself, um, they just look fit. They their, their agility, their speed, uh, their footwork laid at the line um, was was 
was outstanding. It was, it was a completely different side that we've seen to the Warriors in the past where they looked cumbersome and, and lethargic and then they tire in periods, but then their power game would come in and then you know, they'd get on the front, the front foot again, but then they'd wilt again. They were dynamic from, from the first whistle to the end. And oh, I know there's a lot of people out there, a lot of the, the experts that are saying, oh, hang on a minute, you know, like we, we don't want to get too carried around, away. It's round one and it's the Warriors. And since they've been in the competition since 95, you know, we, there's no consistency with them. But I, I think we've got a different Warriors this year. And one of them is one of the reasons is it comes off the back of, of Blake Green. Um, he, a lot like Mitchell Pierce, offers that level of composure to the team. And um, he takes away a lot of pressure from Sean Johnson. Um, Sean Johnson is a dynamic player, and the way he plays is he's the type of player that plays off the cuff and sees what he sees through vision and then goes for it. And his running game, when he's running, because he hasn't been running a lot lately, and especially in the last couple of years, when his running game's on, you know, he's hard to stop. And he showed that a couple of times on the weekend where we just split the defence. And uh, and just for speed and agility, just got through the line, tight spaces. Um, I think Blake Green's going to be perfect for, for Sean Johnson. It takes away a lot of the pressure off him with, with his kicking game because Sean Johnson's kicking game at times can be absolutely woeful. He can, he can kick out on the full, shank kicks, everything, but... Having having that added composure and that experience with Blake Green is just a real level headed footballer, um, and obviously has that ability to stick to game plans. Um, that's really really important for the Warriors this year. Oh, I think they're going to go all right. Um, I'm not going to say I'm sold on them yet, but if they can get through that period, like I mentioned earlier, about you know round ten and they're up there and firing, and um, I know it came out during the week about Alex Corvo. Um, I have to agree. Um, he's a genius. He's, he's been around a long time. He's, you know, he's been at the Storm, the Raiders. Uh, he's been the Australian conditioner for a long time. Um, you know, I think that's a wonderful purchase uh, that Stephen Kearney obviously acknowledged that he had an area there that, that needed to be fixed up. It wasn't wasn't so. Um, it wasn't necessarily a, a playing thing, uh, but a, a lot of what people maybe don't understand is when you when you play the game and you start to fatigue, obviously your decision-making skills go out the window because you're knackered. Um, your ability to, to think quickly, um, you know, in, in tight situations is diminished because you just, you fatigue, you're gassed, you, and, and, and you, you're more concerned about trying to breathe properly than you are thinking about what's happening in front of you. So I think he's going to be wonderful, he's going to um, be wonderful for, for the Warriors. And um, yeah, they looked they looked they looked a heck better team. Uh, with the Rabbitohs, I was disappointed with them. So yeah, um, you know I love the Rabbitohs, but um, they played a style of football on Saturday, and this is just my opinion that it, it looked very super league-ish. Um, it was edge to edge, lateral sideline to sideline, and. Oh, oh, I get, I get the understanding that they've got, you know, two centres that are, that are representative centres and they're outstanding. They're good on their feet. They're powerful, um, you know, in Gagai and, and, and GI. But um, I think what the game plan did, or well, what what they did, was they gassed their edges because they made them do a lot of work, you know, put pushing the opposition. Um, and I know it's it, it's it's attacking, but. It, it tired them, and um, and then when they needed to do, you know, their little one percenters, their their work getting out of their own half, um, with their back five and that, you know, GI and and, and Dane Gagai, they probably didn't do the workload that they probably should have, um, getting out of their own half, and um, I think that didn't help them. They went away, they went, they've gone away from using that that go forward through the middle under Michael Maguire that they've been using the last couple of years, which is good, but it's like the old saying, you know, you've got to earn the right go lateral and you've got to go forward first and, and give your, give your halves time and space to weigh up options to get good clean early ball to your edges. And 
I just thought they just shifted and shifted and shifted. It didn't do them a lot of good. Uh, Damien Cook playing 80 minutes. Um, not my cup of tea. Uh, and I say this specifically for the reason that Damien Cook is a, is a dynamic player. Um, he's, you know, he's, he, he's so fast and... I don't think I've any, ever seen anybody so quick at a dummy half. Like one minute he's there, he's gone. Um, you've got to be on your toes. Your marker and your A and B defenders, you've got to be paying attention to what's going on. Uh, you get anyone caught on the ground, he's gone. Um, you know, you've got one, pers one person marking up, he's gone. Um, the, thing, the thing with Damien Cook is, is because he's so dynamic, um, his ability to play long minutes then diminishes his ability to be explosive. And um, you you kind of notice that in, in his game throughout the 80 minutes that he lost that level of um, a spark to, to, to explode out of dummy half or even just to make good good decisions. The other thing about Damien Cook's game is, is to play a little bit square. When he comes out of dummy half, he just needs to straighten up through his hips and play a little bit more direct for his forwards pushing onto the ball, especially around that A B defender. Um, I think when he, he can get that done properly, I, you know, the the Souths go forward off the back of their a massive pack. You know, you've got your, your Burgess boys, you've got Mark Nichols now, uh, you know, Sammy bursting on the ball. If you can play them straight and you get opposition teams on the back foot through the middle, then you're gonna give your your outside backs um, and your ball players like you know Reynolds and Walker, you're going to give them time and space to have have, have a, crack, a decent crack at opposition edges, especially you know when you've got GI and and, and Gagai hidden, you know opposition halves that are not great defenders. So that was my take on Southside, and I'm not sold on them yet until they can until they can sort of get at the nucleus of a game plan that incorporates both their go forward and using their edges correctly, um, well, I think they're going to struggle. Uh, uh, Adam Reynolds, I know he's had his problems over the last couple of years. I'm a massive fan of Adam Reynolds. Um, he's got a great great short kicking game, a great long kicking game. Didn't see any of that on the weekend. And I know that they lost the forward battle, obviously, and halves need time to play, but... His kicking game was, was was non-existent, and that's one of his that's one of his um, greatest assets is that he has a wonderful wonderful kicking game, and um, didn't say that he hasn't run the ball in a long time. Uh, he hasn't taken on opposition um, defensive lines in a long time, and uh, that worries me. Uh, he's just been more of a you know catch and pass and deliver. You know, it's it's I think he's taken. It's taken away a lot of his uh, his potency to hit the line. Anyway, um, I don't want to go on to that too long. The, the second game over here in Perth was um, you know, the, the reigning premiers against uh, the Dogs. Um, Storm, out, outstanding. They amaze me every year. I, you know, Craig Bellamy, is, what he's got down there and, and the staff and the turnover of staff because a lot of, a lot of the staff that, that he's had over the years are all... You know, they're all either first-grade coaches or assistant coaches in the NRL. So um, as, a, as a head coach, um, if, you wanna, if, you, if you wanna be a head coach or you wanna be an assistant coach in the NRL, go to the Melbourne Storm, uh, learn off Craig Bellamy and his administration, his, his structure, his management, um, because uh, anyone that comes out of that system is a success story. Um, the, the ability that they have to play such structured football, such composed football, um, is, is a testament to, to, to one person, and that's Cameron Smith. Um, just super smart. He's got like the biggest football brain. He... He turns opposition teams around early in tackle counts because he knows, um, you know, either the fullback's up and he's kicking for metres, but also their, their very diligent kick chase is going to get down there and hem the opposition in. And their, their defensive structures are so sound that they basically squash 
and take they strangle the life out of you, um, and they they give you very little. So you know, to to win against the storm, you have to come up with a game plan that's completely out of this world. And and I say I say I say that for a purpose because a lot of teams that have played the Melbourne Storm over the years have always gone in to their their game. I think with the attitude and and the, and the mental attitude of um, let's play not not to lose instead of going out there to play to win. And it, it's hard against them because they shut you down in a lot of areas. You know, the edge defence is super strong. The defence through the middle, uh, you know, they, they're renowned for, you know, tidying up the ruck and, and, and keeping it slow, um, you know, which obviously gives gives, off, gives them the opportunity to reload in defence. Their line speed, especially out wide and your e-defenders, you know, they get up quick, so, you know, they, they nullify any any shifts um, if that's the way you're going to play against them. But it all resolves around their ruck, holding players up to right to the point before they're saying, you know, release or held and then they take you to the ground and gives you another couple of seconds to reload. So um, they're, they're a phenomenal team. Um, like I said, they're, they're just, that's a testament to, to the Melbourne Storm as a club that they've had so much success for such a long period of time. They are definitely the best benchmark in rugby league in the world. Um, I don't care what anyone says. Uh, all these other clubs, they, 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 they want what the Melbourne Storm have got, with no doubt, but you can't replicate it. It's just, it, it's, one, it's, it's a one-off thing and, and um, they should be super proud of it because, like I said, any, any player that ever either goes into the system who's been a reject or you know, struggled for form or clubs couldn't get the best out of them, they go to the Melbourne Storm and they become a superstar. Players that leave, obviously they can't keep everyone under the cap, so players have to leave. It's, it's part part and parcel of the game. They go onto another club and they take that work ethic. They take that that steeliness, that um, that good football brain and and, and visual awareness. Um, they take that with them to the next club, and and other clubs are aware of that because they they buy. They buy. If I was if I was a recruitment officer. And I'm buying for for my club. You know, I'd be the first club that I'd be looking at is anyone that's off contract at the Melbourne Storm, because they take they take what they've learnt there. Like I said, their, their strong work ethic, their their game knowledge, their their, their visual awareness, um, even they're good people. You know, they're, they're they're even good people. So you know, you don't have any problems that come out of the Melbourne Storm off field or anything like that. You know, they're all, they're all wonderful people. They're wonderful role models and ambassadors of the game. I know I'm almost blowing the wind up them, but um, they're awesome. So like I said, if I was a recruitment officer, the first club that I'd be looking at, if I if I needed um, to fill a void in, in one of my spaces on the roster, I'd, I'd be looking at Melbourne Storm first. Um, the Dogs, Kieran Four and back, I thought they were, I thought they were really good. And playing against the minor premiers, and you know they they were level pegging, peggings with them for the majority of the game. Um, the storm never really blew them off the park. I thought um, their defence was was pretty sound. Um, they just tired in areas. I, from from a physical point of view, I think the storm they just they just out muscled them a little bit and. They just wore the, the dogs down, and I think over the period of the next couple of, couple of rounds, I think the Bulldogs will hit their straps, and they're going to we're going to they're going to we're going to see a different team than what we saw in the last couple of years. Um, Kieran Foran, I know um, someone else has said this, and I can't remember where I heard it, but someone said it over the weekend, Kieran Foran, uh, when he's on song and he's playing, uh, there's no other there's no other five eight. There's no other half in the competition that plays as direct and straight, um, which is great. You know, if you hit, if you're hitting lines off him um, on an edge, um, or even through the middle, uh, he, he just he, he he just mirrors up opposition players. He gives you that ability to create that little space, whether it's inside or outside. Um, I think he's going to be really good. The, the thing with with Kieran Foran is if he can stay mentally sound. I know he's had his demons over the last couple of years. Um, 
with family and, and off field drama. But if, if he's if he's mentally there and his body holds up because he's had he's had some really bad injuries over the last couple and a lot of niggle injuries uh, through his hips and groins, um, I think he's, he's, he could be one of the boys of the season. Um, you do you do wonders for the dogs. Um, they've got the pack to accommodate his ball playing ability, uh, and his, his short and his long kicking game is really really good. In particular, his short kicking game uh, to get repeat sets and put opposition teams under pressure. Penrith and, and the Eels. Um, I, I had big raps on the Eels at the start of the year. Uh, I thought what they did last year and what they've been building toward um, was was great. Um, and I thought, th I'm thinking that this year could be their year. Um, but in saying that, um, I've been really impressed. And I know a lot of people have written the pe Penrith off I've been really impressed with what they've done over the last couple of years. Um, they've had quite a young side out there, and um, I think the the addition of James Maloney with with young Nathan Cleary is a masterstroke. Out of the out of the swap, I, I think Penrith got the better deal, um, and the reason I say that is because um, James Maloney is very similar to the way Blake Green will be. For the Warriors, uh, in the sense that he'll, he'll, he'll. The beneficiary is going to be Nathan Cleary because he's gonna he's gonna grasp all that experience that um, that Jimmy's had over the years. And you know he's a rep footballer. He's been around a long time. He came out of a Melbourne Storm system. Um, so um, I, I think I think the Pan Panthers are going to go pretty well. Um, the only thing that worries me about them is. Um, at times, um, their edge defence. Um, they can get caught out, and they can get caught out not because they're, they're poor defenders, it's just that, that um, they don't read things very well. Um, and that kind of worries me. Uh, through the middle, I think there, there's not much problem if if they can control the ruck. Um, where on the flip side, Par uh, Parramatta, they, like they, they started well. They uh, they were on fire early in the game, and then I don't know they 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 just didn't come out after the second half. In the second half, and um, that kind of worried me uh, whether their head was in the game. Um, I think it's tough tough game to line up. Um, of the two of the two teams, I think they're both going to go really well this year, and I think between the two of them, I think they'll finish in the top eight. Um, which one will finish higher? If I was going to put myself out on a limb, I'd probably tip that Penrith, Penrith will finish higher on, on top than the Eels. Um, but, you know, I could be wrong. And um, if, if there was a year that they that they needed to be consistent, this is the year that Penrith needed to be consistent. Now, I think they're both both going to be good teams this year. Uh, the, second, the second game yesterday... Uh, between the Raiders and the Titans, I mean the Raiders got off to an absolute flyer. Um, they're they got they're a massive team. Um, the the thing that worries me about the Raiders is is the fact that they're so big. Um, they they play a style of football that's that's almost conducive to a, a team that's a little bit smaller um, because the way that the way, the way they get around the park. Um, I almost sound like I'm rambling, but um, the, it's ironic that because they're so big and powerful, you'd think them to play like a style of football that what like a, like a South Sydney have played uh, over the years, but they don't. I mean, they, 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 they're flying around the ball. They're on the ball all the time. Um, you know, uh, Salivia, Salivia, whatever his name is, um, the, the hooker who played uh, for Tonga during the World Cup, oh, I think he's out there. Maybe. What a talent! Yeah, obvious, you know, with, with his performance, but also you know, he scored a try. Um, the Titans, they've got the Warriors next week, and the thing that I think that I liked about the Titans is that they hung in there, obviously, um, and you know, to come back from the, the scoreline, the deficit that they were at, to to then win, you know, right on the belt, you know, it's it's. Um, not only outstanding, but it's a testament 
to them to ha- hang in in the game that long. Um, but like I said I think that's just because the the, the Raiders wilted. Um, it's, it's a conditioning thing. It's a round one thing. Um, but the the Titans with that with Ash Taylor's kicking game was 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 really good. Um, I thought Kane Elgie played really well. The edges were, were great. Um, I personally am going to say that they'll probably lose more than what they'll win this year, the Titans. But in saying that, you know, they've got a new coach in Garth Brown who's, by all reports, is, is a wonderful coach. Um, he gets the best out of the players. People, a real people person, so people respond to him, which which is excellent, um, uh, especially what they, from what they've been through in the past, which is, which is great to have a, a person that players can come to um, and, and talk to openly, which is... which. You know, a lot, I wouldn't say a lot of coaches, but you get some coaches that don't have that man management skill uh, and that that emotional ability, you know, to open up and talk to players as well. Um, some some coaches can be very cold. Um, oh, the Titans. Um, yeah, I've, I, I, no, I'm, I'm not on them. I, I, no, I, I think they've recruited well, but. I think it's going to take them a little bit of time. Um, I think it's a, at least a three-year process with them. Um, I think the, the next year will be better, and I think that the year beyond that, if it doesn't happen within that time frame, I think they've missed the boat. Um, they've got the players there. Um, I'm not sure about their depth, you know, especially in key, key areas, which they've struggled with in the past. Um, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sold on them, on, on them yet. Um, but anyway, let's move into round two. Uh, just my tips. I'm going to quickly go through this because I, I think I've gone on for way too long. Um, so round two, we've got Thursday night Sharks up against the Dragons, uh, a local derby. Always a tough game between these two. Uh, very physical and uh, always have a point to prove. Off the back of last week's form, um, Although the Sharks did nothing wrong against the Cowboys, and the Cowboys were, in my opinion, a stiffer opposition to what the Broncos offered the Dragons, I'm going to tip the Dragons by six points. Um, the reason being is I thought and I think that the Dragons go forward. Their power game, their size of their pack will be a little bit too much for the Sharks. Um, you know, they've got a lot of ageing players there. I greatly respect. I mean, they've done wonderful things for the game and the club over a long, long period of time. But um, yeah, I just think, I just think the Dragons, off the win of of last Thursday night, um, can get one over the Sharks early on in the season. Uh, Friday night's games, got the Roosters versus the Bulldogs. Um, like I said earlier, my Roosters, I, I don't think they can turn it around after round one. I think there's. Um, there's a there's a there's a few key areas there, um, attack wise. The defence is fine. The attack wise, um, especially um, off Jake Friend. I thought um, I thought when young um, Victor Radley came on, they played better. I just think they offered a little bit more when Radley came on. They're a little bit sharper out of dummy half. Um, you know. Obviously, age difference to play a different style of football. You know, Jake's really tough defensively. Um, doesn't offer a lot when it comes to the ball playing ability. He'll tidy up that that ruck. Um, you know, through the middle third, he he just does his job. But I, like I said, I'm I'm, not, I'm a I'm a more of a fan when Radley came on than what the anyway. I'm going to go the Bulldogs. I think you know, early season form of Roosters. They're still tinkering with a few things, and uh, you know, from what the Bulldogs showed against quality opposition in the Storm on the weekend, um, I, I think you know they can get away with. It. I'm going to tip it close one, maybe two points. Um, the other Friday night game, um, Big Brother versus Little Brother, and Little Brother in the last couple of years. Um, don't think things are going to change. It's going to be another tight game, uh, no doubt, because. Both teams bring out the best in one another. It's it's a pride thing, uh, a Queensland thing. Um, but, yeah, 
I think the cows by probably four points. Um, Saturday's games, um, got the Warriors versus the Titans. Uh, I'm sticking with the Warriors. I don't think it's a you know win loss win loss or a win loss 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 for the Warriors. I really think based around their physical preparation and the and the way that they looked against South on the weekend, um, that they got away to a score line, and normally you're really concerned about the Warriors about them wilting um, and, and and conceding a lot of points in short spaces, but. I can't see them doing that. It's not with Blake Green there. Um, they they look like a team on the weekend that once they they got to a point, you know, they were more composed. They still weren't throwing the ball around willy nilly. You know, stupid offloads, just off the cuff. They were structured and, and they kept to their game plan. And and I can see them. I can actually see them doing that um, again this weekend with the Titans. You know, they they allowed Canberra to get off to a flyer and. Canberra, you know, like I said, I, I think they just tired more than anything. Um, and, you know, obviously mistakes, penalties. But I don't think the Titans can allow the Warriors to get away with the start that they did against Canberra. And and if that happens, like the Warriors got off to a fly against South, um, played really, really well, I don't think the Titans have the ability to claw them back. So I'm going to tip the Warriors by 12. Um Penrith versus the Rabbitohs, like I said, very disappointed in the Rabbitohs. Um, I can't tip them with any with, with any real enthusiasm. Uh, I think Penrith, I'm going to tip them by 18. Um, the Storm versus the Tigers. Now this is going to sound like I'm, a, I'm an absolute lunatic, but I think this game is going to be pretty close. Um, based on what I saw with the resolve in their defensive structure with the Tigers, the thing I liked about the way they defended on the weekend against the Roosters, and the Roosters threw everything at them, um, was that in the past, the Tigers had that tendency to drop off in phases um, or they had people shoot out of the line trying to put what, what shots on. I can't see them doing that. The way that Ivan's obviously um, got them prepared defensively, they have a lot of faith in their in the inside and their outside defensive partner. That showed on the weekend. Um, you know, that the trust in one another just to defend one on one or, you know, getting bodies getting bodies in the tackles was really, really good. Um so I'm gonna I'm gonna tip the Tigers in an upset over the Premiers um by six points. I'm gonna look like an absolute ass, but yeah, I could be right. Uh Sunday's games, the Seagulls up against the Eels. Um not I wasn't too impressed. Well, I'm not sold yet on the Sea Eagles. I think they have the ability to have a pretty good year and, and they might even do what they did last year is in scrape into the eight. Um, but I saw enough in the Eels on the weekend against Penrith, who I think are going to go really well, to, to say that they've won, they can turn it around in a week. Um, but also the fact that um, they've got a game, they, they've got a style of play that I think that can that can really worry the Sea Eagles. Uh, if the Eels can contain the Sea Eagles through the middle off the back of Martin De Pau's power running um, and offload, um, I, I think you know the Eels put themselves in a good position to win the game. I'm going to tip them by 14. Um, last game of the round um, is the Raiders against uh, the upset winners in in the Knights. Uh, I'm going to stick with the Knights. And the reason is, is because um, I'm going off last year's form, and you shouldn't do that. But the way that I saw, the way that the Knights played against the Sea Eagles, which were a pretty good team last year, um, and they, you know, they had their fair share of really good wins against tough opposition. Um, they took that into this year's game against the Knights, and the Knights really stepped up. Especially in their defence, um, like I said, they, their their steeliness and composure un, under under pressure, especially defensively, of repeat sets was really really good. And um, Mitchell Pearce kept them together. Uh, I'm going to tip a tight one. I mean, the only thing that worries me about the Knights and the Raiders is the Raiders are a massive massive team, 
and you know they're hard to contain, especially through the middle. Um, and if 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 the Knights can hold them defensively, I think they have enough attacking ability um, to outscore them. And I'm tipping the Knights by four points. Anyway, that's um, all wrapped up. Thanks to Josh Durgan. Uh, that's what I'm going to call my segment from now on. Um, hope you got something out of it. Uh, just a rugby league fan. Just uh, obviously giving a wrap, but also in my tips for this week. Stay tuned and I'll, um, I'll see you next week. See you, people.